going on people we are tottenham tv back again with another tottenham update and we brought you the news yesterday about australian publications talking about potential staff changes happening at tottenham hotspur and now we've got it confirmed by the club as of yesterday and they say matt wells has been promoted to senior assistant coach replacing chris davis who's gone to birmingham nick montgomery and sergio raymundo join as assistant coaches and will begin their work at the start of pre-season on monday then i believe and Ange postacoglu said I'm delighted to confirm that Matt Wells has been named as our new senior assistant coach. He's an outstanding young coach who's been, who has a great work ethic and attention to detail. He thoroughly deserves his opportunity. It's great to welcome Nick and Sergio to the club. They'll add t talented coaches we already have on the staff here. Both Nick and Sergio have a wealth of coaching experience over a number of years. They have already demonstrated a strong desire to both develop young talent and implement a football style that I believe will further strengthen the environment we have already established. I'm looking forward to working with them. I was doing some research into all, th all three of these coaches and um, obviously Matt Wells has been at Tottenham for, for quite a, a while. Well, he actually started his youth career at Tottenham, but then unfortunately had to retire early. Due do you know to who he is? Years. Matt Wells? What do you mean, do I know who he is? Do you know who he is? In what sense? Who's related to? Oh, yes, he's the grandson of Cliff, Cliff Jones. Jones. Yes, yeah. He's the grandson of Cliff Jones. Uh, I did look at that as well. He, is, he was under 18's manager back in um, 2018, uh, 2018 to 2019. Had a he's really got good Tottenham record. in his blood, Matt Wells. Had a really good record uh, those years ago. Play, uh, managed 18 games, winning 14, drawing two, losing one of his 18 games for the under 18s. Obviously, he's only under 18s. Um, was assistant manager to Scott Parker at Bournemouth and Club mm. Rouge. Um, obviously became, uh, he joined Spurs. Um, he was actually assistant manager as well to under 23s for three years back in between 2014 and 2017. So was he, was he working at the club when Scott Parker was on the playing staff here? Um, no, doesn't no. say so. He was, at, he was actually a Tottenham Academy product between 1997 and 2008, but he had to retire early due to a lot of injuries, became a coach instead. Was a coach at Fulham, um, as well when Scott Parker was there was an assistant but then he was assistant to Parker at Bruges and Bournemouth then became uh, acting assistant says here back to Tottenham uh, for Tottenham into 2023 and now he's been promoted to full-time assistant so it does have experience so I'm excited uh, for him in terms of Nick Montgomery um, he has been a manager a couple of times um, he was a manager at Hibs uh, and he apparently had did an awful job when mm. he was manager at Hibs um, back in uh, when was it it was back in, yeah, only last year, not long ago. He got sacked May 2024. So literally a few months ago, he got sacked. Um, I think Ange probably knows him because he played in the A-League. Um, and managed in the A-League as well. managed in the A-League as well. Um, he managed in the A-League um, in... He managed, sorry, he played in the A-League between 2012 and 2017, which I think Ange was um, a manager in the A-League at that point, and then managed in the A-League between 21 and 23. Had a fairly decent record, 63 games, 32 wins, 11 draws, lost. Didn't he win the league? Not, not, is, that, when, is that league form? I thought he won the league with Central Coast Mariners in, with the um, smallest budget. Is that, is that not true? I don't, I don't see that here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he did. Um, he was a key part of the side. That he reached, they reached the final. Oh, so sorry. Um, yes, guiding the A-League Championship, he did. Yeah. He did win the league. Yeah, um, but then went to. But Hibs. what's so impressive about that? He he won the league with the team in the A League with the lowest budget in the whole league. Yeah, and then went on to manage Hibs, and they finished bottom half. They yeah. weren't very good, uh, yeah. and they got sacked uh, very quickly. And Sergio Raimundo was his assistant in both clubs. Yeah. So that's the experience these guys have. Obviously, it's not the. You know, when you see other clubs appointing experiences, maybe not the experience they have, but. Ange knows who he's picking, and I'm, hoping, I'm look, wishing these guys all the best. Yeah, Ange did say, you know, that he likes to give Australians their opportunity this side of uh, of the world because sometimes they're not very much recognised managing in Australia, and um, a lot of people over there are not don't get the uh, recognition they deserve um, in the, in European football. So he tries to make them relevant, I guess, and uh, may hopefully this one turns out uh, good. Well, I don't know. If, I don't think he's Australian because he used to be a centre back for Sheffield United for twelve years. He says he's English here, but he was in Australia. Mm. Um, and same with Matt Wells. Maybe Ramondo. Maybe he's Australian. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe not Australian, but someone that's 
done good work in Australia, maybe, mm. and that's where he made his name. Yeah. Uh, he so did. maybe that's what he's well, doing. Well, made his name at Sheffield United. But yeah, then as a did, coach. As a coach. But we'll see. Uh, maybe, I don't know, do you reckon this is like a, for him, having been a manager so recently? Is this like a stepping stone to getting back into management, or maybe he's? Uh, I don't know. Done we'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I, I guess all we can do is focus on him being at Tottenham now and taking us on to a new level. He does have, um, you know, a bit of a good reputation about him in terms of the jobs that he did at Central Coast Mariners. Ange Postecoglou obviously seems to very much like him. So let's hope this is a match made in heaven. And I think the impressive thing about what you say when you said he does it with the smallest, he won the A League with the smallest budget, that means you have to approach things in a different way rather than just buying the best players. And you always have to find a tactical approach to winning games. And even at that level, it means you're focusing on tactics. I think, I think maybe that's what Ange values when he's mm. looking at that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think mentality as well. Uh, but let's move on and talk about transfers. Let's talk about Jed Spence as the Genoa CEO. Blazquez has been talking and he said, I'd be happy to keep Jed Spence at the club. He was doing a great job here on loan, but it doesn't depend on us. Spence would be very happy to stay at Genoa, but Tottenham are a rich club. <laughs> well, yeah, so they want to pay the least amount of money. It's obvious. It's a bit of posturing. It doesn't surprise me in the media. They're, they're going to say that. Um, Tottenham, uh, hopefully, there's some flexibility in the price. There's usually some in between. We know Spence doesn't want to step. We don't want to keep him. He's, uh, Andrew's, it's not in Andrew's plans to keep him. At the moment, he's been through various loan spells with very little success, apart from maybe Genoa, where he's um, done. There's been the best loan spell for him, so hopefully we can find a compromise, and I think we ho hopefully will be able to. Yeah, I hope so, and and, and let's hope they come to an agreement quickly because we don't want this move breaking down and them starting to look at other targets. We want to get this deal done over the line so we can just quickly and swiftly move on. Let's talk about Giovanni Lo Celso. ABC Sevilla publication out in Spain, obviously, says Real Betis will play the long game with Giovanni Lo Celso from Tottenham this summer, hoping to put pressure on later in the transfer window. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, unless um, he's um, kind of got loads of offers on the table, Tottenham know, they know he's on one year left on his deal. Tottenham want to sell, and they're probably thinking, the later we wait, as, lo as long as no one else really gets involved in the bidding war, then that will drive down the price. And if it gets late in the window and we haven't sold him, the price will go down because I don't think we want to keep him unless he signs yeah. the contract. Absolutely. But does that maybe halt our transfer targets this summer? Do we bring in another 10 until Giovanni Lo Celso goes? If it comes down to it later on in the window and maybe the targets that we want have all been snapped up, do we keep him for another year? I mean, which way do we go? I think, he, I think the way we used him later in the season suggests to me He's not, in our, he's not in our plans. We want to sell him. So I do think he will get sold. Um, I, I don't think we're approaching the season with him in mind. That's my feeling. So I'm hoping that whatever happens when our window doesn't affect the La Celsa situation. Hope so as well. Let's talk about potential incomings. Let's talk about a report from Bill saying that Tottenham are amongst the club interested in by Leverkusen defender Piero Hincapié, a player that we have spoken about in the past. Mm -hmm. um, brilliant, brilliant player left centre back can play left back as well I think he'd fit in really well but I think when you're looking at a player of his quality it's going to demand a very big fee uh, maybe even more than a, someone like a Ricardo Calafiori yeah, uh, potentially I know last season he only started 16 games in the league so what was that down to? I don't know if it was down to injury or maybe just a lot you know they had Jonathan Tarr they had um, Tapsoba in, in the team, so it was hard to get into that team, to be fair. But he was um, like a star the Grimal year before. Grimaldo, um, Grimaldo at left back as well, so it's tough to get in that team. Um, and yeah, and I know he was a star the year before, but um, since Alonso's come in, obviously he's liked him, but he hasn't started as many games as maybe he would have liked. Um, Tar is leaving now, though. Tar's leaving, so maybe he sees an opportunity to step in there. Maybe that's why they've, what they've uh, allowed Tar to leave, because they feel like they've got an Acapie coming through. Maybe he's still quite young. How old is he? Tw Twenty three now. Uh, Twenty two. Still, sorry. So he's still fairly young. So um, that probably plays into it. Taps over and Tar and Grimaldo, all, all that bit more experienced. But for me, I think he's got so much ability, so much potential. He's really aggressive as well. Um, I like the way he plays. He's versatile. I think he'd be a top signing if we were to get him through the door. Um, he would. I don't think he'd come cheap. But maybe. If Leverkusen um, see him as a player who only started 16 games, maybe they would be willing to do a deal. For yeah, him, he was substituted in 10 games, 
a starting 11, 16 games, on the bench five games, um, three games out suspended, zero games out injured all season. Mm. So it's an interesting one because I didn't know that he was um, only started 16 times this season. I thought he was like a mainstay in that team. I mean, um, it's, it's not insignificant, 16 starts. No, I know that, yeah. Unbeaten. So like, it still means that when he was in the team and he was in the team for nearly half the games, you all remember there's only how many games? 34 games. That is pretty much half the season. Uh, he was in the starting eleven, and it's not like there was a drop in quality because they still stayed unbeaten in, even with him in the team. So, I don't think it was a case of they didn't like him, but maybe he just wasn't their first choice. He started all but one uh, Europa League games all the way to the final and started the final as well they against did Atalanta. A bit in, uh, yeah, in, uh, Europa League. Um, so look, I think he's a great, he's a really good player, and I think at 22 he's only going to get better. So I think it'll be a very interesting deal. Yeah, um, yeah, but it remains to be seen how much he would cost. I, whether it would be more or less than uh, Calafiori. Maybe it would be a, a similar price because we know Calafiori is going to demand a big fee and it's getting bigger and bigger as the Euros progress the, mm. with the way he's playing. And obviously, Hincapié is out in uh, Copa America playing there at the moment. Mm. Uh, let's talk about Calafiori, actually, because Tuto Sports saying that Tottenham have now entered into talks with Bologna with a view to submitting an offer to Ricardo Calafiori. Spurs are ready to make their move. However... Arsenal have been t in touch with the player's agent. Arsenal starting to piss me off a little bit in this window. They're heavily linked with Eze now. And um, now Calafiori, it looks like they could be going for. Uh, Fabrizio Romano on Calafiori did say that Bologna have to give 40% of the transfer fee above 60 million, uh, above 6 million that they get on Calafiori. So that is also another reason why this price is, is obviously going to be very high. So what Spurs will do is they'll do a loan deal for six million or something, and then they'll pay the rest. So the, the go, that goes around the deal somehow, knowing knowing Daniel Levy. He's always got his loopholes, uh, financial wranglings. Um, a life a lifetime loan of just uh, you know yeah, just lifetime. fees going <laughs> going year every loan. year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that'll be that'll be classic Levy. But look, I, I've, I've watched him now closer in the Euros, and, and obviously I was very excited about him in Bologna. But watching him at a higher level at the Euros, starting for, for Italy. He's been brilliant. Um, he got a brilliant assist for oh. the goal against uh, for, against Croatia uh, in the last minute. The way he just steps into midfield, not only did he do that, he, he commits a risk at the last minute. He does really well carrying the ball, and then he has the presence of mind to play a little pass, perfectly weighted for the Italian player to, to stroke home, and um, obviously got that equaliser. I thought he's been brilliant um, so far at the Euros. He's been one of the shining lights for Italy. And whoever gets him is going to be a lucky, lucky team. And I would love for Tottenham to win that race. I just feel like the more we're seeing him in the Euros, the more the interest is going to grow because people are starting to really take notice about how good of a player he really is. And um, there was a lot of noise about him before the Euros, and it's only growing and growing now. So whether that uh, they'll even talk about the end of the season, the price being 25 million, that's already gone up at least 10 million. Yeah, um, I reckon double Euros. that. So you might be looking at 45 or, or something or 50 million. Um, by the time the Euros ends. So let's see if Tottenham will still be in the race at that point. But if these two are our targets in that position, I'm, I'm very, and if we can get either one of them through the door, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. Definitely. And I think, uh, you know, both of them would be very good options for us. Can cover left back, can cover left centre back. And with the ages of the back line, if, you, if you're looking at that, a doggy, Hincapié or Calafiori, both at a similar age, Van de Ven, Romero, Dragushin, and Pedro Porro. You're looking at the defence sorted for the next, what, four or five years at least. Yeah, like, unless anyone has a dramatic decline or a bad injury, then 100%, yeah. Let's talk about Jonathan David. Jacob Steinberg says that David is at the heart of a tussle between Chelsea, Manchester United, Tottenham and West Ham with all four clubs making checks on the Lille striker as part of their search for an attacking reinforcement. David is ready to make the move to the Premier League with Lille looking to sell in order to avoid losing him on a free when his contract does expire in 12 months. He could be attainable for as little as £20 million. Spurs are thought to be keen to add... Uh, more variety to their attack and members of their recruitment team are admirers, ad admirers of the Canadian forward. He scored the winner last night in Canada's 1-0 win over Peru. Really nice finish as well. Um, definitely a guy who knows where the back of the net is. Can he translate that into the Premier League? Only time will tell once he does get his move to one of these t four teams. But I'd love to see him through the door. Yeah, perfect timing that goal, wasn't it? Really good finish, <laughs> as you say. And I've been looking more into him. And the more I look into him, the more excited I do get, to be fair, because of his consistency, because of his age and his potential that he does have. Um, he is an exciting player. Obviously, 
he didn't have the best World Cup, which maybe turned quite a few people off. But he just has been a consistent goal scorer um, in the French League, which is easier said than done. I know some other strikers have maybe done that as well. But um, he got to remember he's only 24, and doing it at that age is impressive. So I am generally excited. Now, the fact that we're in a bidding war with Man United, Chelsea, and who's the other one? West Ham, you say? Yeah. It's not great. Um, I, I think that will obviously drive the price up and Tottenham do look look to avoid these bidding wars if they can Do I am I confident with, out of those three clubs Tottenham are going to have the highest bid um, probably not so let's hope that we can sort of sell him the vision of the project and that we can convince him to come but at that price I think it's no no surprise that Tottenham are looked at and thinking I mean with, that, with his track record that price his age his profile as well I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer at this point because uh, even if it flops, it's only twenty million. You know, you haven't like spent big money on a striker that flops, and that's always a risk, which we've seen in the past. We've spent big money on strikers who haven't done well, and all of a sudden you're stuck with a striker um, who's not scoring, and no one wants him. And at least with Jonathan David, it's only twenty million. So. We have to wait and see, but um, I feel like this one is going to rumble on for a while. Yeah, just a small case of £20 million. Uh, pounds. Let's maybe move. a small change in this day and age. <laughs> yeah, maybe not for Daniel Levy. But um, let's talk about the last bit of transfer news, which is probably the biggest non-event and non-story that we've spoken about this summer transfer window. And Graham Bailey says that West Ham have dismissed an inquiry from Tottenham over the availability of Jared Bowen. West Ham informs Spurs it would take a bid in the region of 150 million for the West Ham to even consider the sale of Jared Bowen. Like Jared, like who the hell is making up these stories? Bollocks. And also, um, I, I don't think they would. It would have to take 150 million, but I think only for Spurs it would take 150 yeah. million. I reckon if Liverpool come in for him, they might sell for about less than 100 potentially, or maybe or maybe 100. I don't know. I don't think if Liverpool came in, they'll demand 150. He's a very important player to West Ham. I know he is, and he's a very good player. But he's not a hundred fifty million pound player. No. And West Ham, they've got the natural placement already there in Kudus. You can just put him on the right hand side, and then they can invest that money in buying a striker. Um, so when you're looking at exits out complete... of West Ham, I think there's more. It's more likely that uh, Kudus leaves than Jarrod Bowen. I'm just saying, if they got a bid for a hundred million, it, it's not the dumbest. It's not like if I'm West Ham, you you, you sell Bowen. You put Kudus on the right hand side, and then you also, all of a sudden you've got Kudus, Pakitar, um, already still there, Pakitar stays, that is. Um, you, sign, you, 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 you sign a striker, uh, and your, your attack is still looking pretty good. So I think it would make sense to sell for them at 100 million, but they're not going to sell to Spurs. The PR for that would be horrendous. There will be riots from the fans um, selling their star player to Tottenham. Um, it wouldn't they have make got sense previous of selling to us, though. Yeah, but long time ago now yeah that, I think last time was Defoe yeah um, I think so so I don't think that would happen again Defoe and Carrick were big ones weren't they Carrick that was also yeah, a while ago uh, it was never going to happen they were never going to entertain anything from Tottenham we know that yeah but I would love Vern <laughs> I would love play. great player absolutely top player um, and I thought he um, he's looked good in an England shirt as well. He hasn't got his real chance in the Euros, mm. but in the uh, friendly games before the Euros, I thought he looked brilliant. It's like Arsenal inquiring on like I don't know Madison or something. Or it's just not. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Or Romero. It's like Madison inquiring on uh, Arsenal inquiring on Romero. Yeah. Never going to entertain. Never. And you add uh, 50 million just because it was there. If it's Arsenal, I'm adding 200, yeah, 200 million. million yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, the Mirror, uh, Dan Marsh is reporting that Tottenham forward Jude Sunson Bell is set to head out on loan next season. There was interest in him, interest in him from several League One clubs back in January, and clubs throughout the AFL still retain a strong interest in him. So it'll be interesting to see which club he does end up at and uh, how well he does. Yeah, and I'll yeah be very interested to see uh, how well he does at that level because he's had he's been pretty decent, uh, not maybe got the same hype as the likes of Langshire and Donnelly um, at that level. But as well, you got to remember when he was signed him, and we signed him from Chelsea, didn't we? There was a lot of talk about. Yeah, he was still uh, up for the Player of the Year award. In the, I'm not in the saying I'm not saying from uh, I'm not saying he wasn't as good. I'm just saying from the fan base for some reason there's not much hype. I think maybe because of injuries and stuff. He did have a quite a significant drop off second half of the season, though. That I think that's what it is. Mm, there hasn't just been the same hype about him, but he's been doing really well. And there was a lot of hype when we did um, get him from Chelsea. So let's see how he does. If he gets a loan deal, and I'd be really excited about it. Yeah, there's apparently a bit of a, well, I say tug of war, but a bit, I would say maybe it's a bit less of a, maybe a conversation happening whether he chooses to represent England or Thailand at this moment in time. So I'll think if I was him, I'd be a bit patient. Because if you tie yourself to Thailand and you all of a sudden you become a star, 
then you're playing your whole career for Thailand and it's like you're never going to achieve anything. Yeah, it's true. But anyway, that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs.